Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. This is actually one of my favorite miniatures in the core box. It's just a fantastic piece and he has this really cool basing that you can also paint. And uh, I do him full comic book style, even the base. And so this is much more comic book style than I have even in the past. And so if you're looking into that technique or just want to see him painted up, uh, artistically in that way, then uh, be sure to check this out because I think it turned out really, really well. All right. As always, guys, if you do enjoy the video at any time and you feel inclined, click that thumbs up button and then go right back to watching or do it at the end or do it right now. I don't care. Uh, just uh, let me know that you appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot anyway. All right, let's get to it. Starting things out, we're going to use ash gray for the... Uh, the kind of uh, body suit that he has here. This, I think it's like Kevlar, some some junk like that. This is very similar, obviously, to the movie version of him that Ben Affleck played uh, in the later two films. Uh, you know, because it was kind of loosely based on that that storyline and that kind of situation and just that kind of art style. Um, I'm also going to be doing Ash Gray on this building here as well. Now, you might remember from my other videos how I do the uh, actual base part of the miniature, the flat part, and how I use Ash Gray there, but that's all the way to the very end. Uh, you could, I guess, paint the base and then use Ash Gray all at one time and then just have the base done. Um, that's certainly a possibility, though I didn't do it here. It's not that hard much harder just to bring out ash gray kind of towards the end anyway um but you know just be sure to use a brush you're okay with this this is a rough texture and it it can really kind of damage the bristles if, if you're not careful next up i have white and this is for his kind of uh his eye slits here and then of course his like gritted teeth and that's really it for this um what's kind of nice about it it's always hard to paint at this scale this is really small obviously and so the the eyes would be very hard but it's literally just like these white slits he doesn't have pupils or anything like that it's like i don't know if it's a glow or it's some kind of style they do all right speaking of the flat base we're going to go ahead and throw uniform gray on that already and that's because i want to use the known oil once and i'm going to use the known oil here in a little bit and so i need this base painted first just kind of get that color locked in All right, next up I have basic skin tone. This is just for kind of his lower half of his face that's showing us. So just kind of his chin, his, you know, upper lip, and then his, you know, kind of sides of the, the cheeks are just this little kind of jaw. I mean, it's Batman. He's got to have that kind of stone jaw showing, right? And uh, I think this really helps solidify the face as the central point of this miniature, which is really nice. Um, it also helps that his kind of gorilla pose he has with his arms covers up his yellow belt. Uh, so that's not as flashy. As it would be otherwise. Okay, so this is where I messed up, uh, but but let me talk you through this. So as you might know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I am mildly colorblind, and uh, blues and oranges are actually my difficulty. So I have a Batman blue. Um, is what I'm going to refer to it as, and that's a Cantor Blue by Citadel. It is a really good blue and one I plan on using on multiple Batmen or anything that kind of ties into that Bat family kind of blue color. Um, and if you notice, the, the, if you know the source material, when this was f like first done, it was this very bright blue, a very bright blue. Um, but you saw kind of the, the issue that I had here, and then if you look at his character art, in the game it to me it looked kind of purple so I actually had this planned as Cantor blue and changed it to Nagaroth Knight. Um, upon further reflection and feedback from others it is still in fact blue just kind of a shaded blue and so what I'm gonna do is I obviously I, I painted him all purple first so you're gonna see me paint him all purple his trunks his gloves his boots his cowl his um, bat symbol as uh, also and this is a top and bottom or front and back of the cape as well. Um, I swap into a larger brush now that I've highly, you know, kind of trimmed out everything. Uh, so it's a little bit safer and just a little bit quicker. You've seen me do that on multiple here now. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go in and keep the purple though, and instead of repriming it or anything like that, I'm actually just gonna put blue on top of it. So here's the Cantor blue that I talked about and put it on top. Now, when you're painting like this with thin down paints and light coats, it's it's going to show the undercoat a little bit so what this means is this 
Cantor Blue is going to be a bit darker than if I just done Cantor Blue on the Primed Miniature beforehand. Uh, for instance, if you prime a miniature in black and paint this over it, it'll be much different than if you primed it in white and painted much uh, and then painted over it. So it'll be a little bit darker, and I think that actually helps sell it more than I was hoping. So this actually like worked out really well, I think. Um, by all means, if you're following this and you're painting, just go straight to the Cantor Blue. That's fine. You also get you know kind of closer to the original. Um, you know, kind of bright blue that that he's uh, uh, in the uh, in the comic. But uh, if you want kind of my result, just follow my steps, I guess. He does have claws. Um, seems kind of dangerous, but this is a very dangerous version of Batman. Like there aren't many that aren't. Uh, Gunmetal for the base coat here. I'm gonna again, just like when I showed the Joker and Harley Quinn and all that. Um, I'm doing a lot of the metal in the same way as well. Babe Blonde is for the. Uh, the utility belt that he has here and Bay Blonde has some coverage issues. Yellow is really hard anyway, Bay Blonde more so. I've found Daemonic Yellow by Army Painter to kind of cover, do some better coverage. So feel free to swap it to that one if you don't want to bother with this. It took a, quite a few coats. And ironically, I'm just going to throw no no on it anyway and darken it up because I don't want to blackline it because of the positioning. I wouldn't be able to do it in the front very well and a wash will kind of give me the same effect. Uh, without having to be exact in my lines. Next up we have Agrax Earthshade for the building. I wanted the building to be kind of dirty and dingy like it's in Gotham. Um, additionally, I didn't want it to be all gray. There's already a lot of gray on him and the base is already gray as well. So if this was just gray without this kind of brown tint to it, it would just be a lot of gray on the miniature and I, I didn't want it to be like that. I wanted to change it up a little bit. Um, I did paint both bases. Uh, but I'm only showing you this one, but I painted the other one the exact same way. So the little piece of rubble on there is also getting agrax or shade as well. Uh, feel free to let it pool in those uh, um, you know, kind of bullet holes and cracks and crevices. And I mean, we, we want this to be a fairly big contrast, uh, as you know. So and in fact, I'm going to be black lining a lot of that, too. Next up, we have the blue shade Drakenhof Nightshade. This is kind of the blue wash from Citadel. And this is just overall the Cantor blue. So we're just going to kind of cover up everything, including the bat symbol, the trunks, the gloves, the boots. Um, obviously, you want to be careful not to get this on the gray. That would be bad. You would have to re, uh, you know, re redo the gray. Uh, however, once you're doing the gray, it's not as much of a big deal if you get a little bit of that on the blue. So just be careful in this step. In future steps, you can kind of be a little bit quicker on Now notice I'm also keeping him on the base. By all means, see I just got a little bit on there. Take him off the base and do it. Uh, then you know you won't quite make a, a mess like I did. Now for the ash gray bodysuit, I'm now putting Nolan oil on it, and this is going to again seep in all the crevices, tint it, darken a little bit. This is pretty much the color I want it. So the highlight is just going to be that in an extreme highlight, just to give it that that uh, shading. But the the overall color that I really want it to be is pretty much this. Uh, I think it's a really good uh, ash gray with a Nolan oil on it. Just shows up so well. Um, it's why I use it in reverse on the base all the time and do the Nolan oil with an ash gray uh, highlight. It's just it, it it just tints it really well and the contrast is really really good and really smooth on this miniature too, which is nice. Now, as I said, I wanted to do the Nolan oil all one go, so on the base as well, we're gonna throw that on that uh, uniform gray we painted there. Now, for the black lining. Now, spoiler alert, um, I don't always upload my videos in the same order I make them. So, this is actually the first time I black lined a miniature. <laughs> An interesting tidbit there, I, I guess. I don't know. So, you've seen me do this a few times, but me in the video, this is my first time doing it. And, uh, again, I was pretty uncertain about it, but it ends up very well. He has such great texture in that suit that's, like, barely fitting over him. Like, I don't know how he'd, like, squeeze that in there or out of it. Uh, that's gonna be kind of rough. Maybe he just sleeps and it's a permanent suit. I don't know. Um, hopefully then at least he showers in it, too. Uh, definitely outline the eyes. Uh, the art always has these thick black uh, uh, lines around the eyes. And then just anywhere there's kind of a crease, you're just accentuating that. You're just popping it out more. So even with the black, you can tell the contrast has gone up. And then we're going to shoot it up to like 11 with the highlights. Uh, but and you'll notice I got a little bit in the eye. You can touch it up. Just get some white and touch it up. I'm going to do it off camera. It's no big deal. 
And again, with the utility belt, I'm just going to put some oil on there off camera uh, because there's no way you can blackline that very well with his arms uh, covering it covering it up so much in his like gorilla pose that he has. Uh, be careful on these like solid lines, obviously you're going to want to be kind of close. That being said, again, you're kind of going for a comic book painted feeling, uh, at least I am, as opposed to like a cell shading that's like done on a computer or with very straight lines and shapes. Uh, this is very much, I'm fine actually seeing the brush stroke here. Uh, so lots of small crevices here. Uh, just be sure to get in there. Uh, what's nice is you're essentially just tracing where the Agrex Earthshade pooled and pretty much covering, you know, 90, 95% of that, um, creating these deep, deep shadows, uh, which works out, I, again, I think really, really well. Now, another thing, just while we have time here to note, is on my other miniatures and my future miniatures, I'm actually not doing the cell shading on the base because when you put it on the game board itself, it pops it completely out. And what I mean by that is it doesn't match the realistic art that's on the game board. Uh, so while it will match the art in maybe comic book or even the hero uh, uh, sheets and character tiles, it won't match the game board, which is in a completely different style. Kind of a weird scenario there, but I found that keeping the base normal, as in normal highlights and shades and shades and this non-comic book style, uh, kind of helps blend the two together quite well. Okay, so now I've added white to the Cantor blue. As you can see, quite a lot of white. This is a very bright, like for a while here, he's gonna look like he's from Tron. Uh, where it's just like these like electric blue kind of highlights. Again, you're going to definitely accentuate the face and his mask and the kind of... It, this mask is actually really good because it has a very defined shape. It has it's one of those more hard uh, edged uh, and lined uh, masks of his. So you can get that nose and the cheekbones and the eyebrows kind of are like in this triangle thing here. And he has this little tiny you know, bat ears that you're going to want to pop out and then kind of give it a highlight on the top as kind of this, uh, to, to give it some curvature. But otherwise, we're going to finish up doing the cape. We're going to do the mask. We're going to do the gloves, especially that fist. Uh, I'm not worried about the inside of that glove, though you can kind of peek between his legs from the back at an upward angle and get a little bit of that, but it's not the focus. It's not something you're going to naturally see on the miniature unless you pick it up and actually turn it at that angle, which is the only way you can paint it anyway. So it depends on how you're painting. If you're painting because you just want it all painted, if you're just painting for fun, that's what I do. Um, so I painted, or if you're painting, you know, so people can pick it up. Now, what I like here in this scene is you can already see the highlights and the black and how kind of cartoony that makes it look, uh, which I really, really dig. I think it looks really good like that. And I like the how it's not perfectly white lines. You know, I didn't get any micron pins out and try to make these perfect lines or anything like that. Um, I'm kind of embracing the roughness of... Uh, a natural painting and it kind of kind of helps speed it along in that way this would be much harder if I was really trying to do like some crazy freehand all right next up I, I put Cantor blue here but really this is the same so I have a wet palette so I can add and subtract well I can't really subtract but I can slowly add white into it and so what I did is I had my Cantor blue that was plain Cantor blue and then I had um, you know, the white, and this is like a little bit of white in the Cantor blue, uh, because I kind of mixed it up just a little bit, and you're just lining that, you know, really bright highlight, um, and that is sufficient to kind of blend a little bit and just not make it quite as drastic, uh, not, not quite Tron like here. Now, with this, it's just ash gray, I didn't add any white to it at all. Ash gray is a naturally quite bright gray, it was darkened heavily because it's naturally quite bright with the dark, you know black wash that is known oil so just going straight ash gray again really pops out these highlights and you'll see how it just accentuates all of the ripples that he has in here and you'll see in times like this um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purposely not really blend it and leave kind of a big chunk um, of you know the regular washed ash gray there so there's a big kind of margin around the spot and that kind of central highlight uh, really you know uh, makes it give that kind of cell shaded look a comic look to it as you can see also highlighted the uh, 
um, uh, base as well. That's something I won't normally do. Now for this, I actually did add a little bit of white to the ash gray, um, but again, just a smidge. And the only reason I did that is because I, I wanted to make this so right now it's very brown and I didn't want it to quite be so brown and so just a, a tiny bit of white in that ash gray um, to kind of make it seem a bit more gray and then I'm doing the edge highlight on the side of the brush as you can see here on these edges these nice crisp edges to really pop them out um, and then a long painstakingly long time you're definitely seeing an edited version here highlighting each and every single one of these cracks just like it did on the base. It ends up looking really well, I think. I'm really, really happy with the result, but um, doing this kind of style definitely takes, uh, makes the miniature last a lot longer when it comes to painting and how long it takes. Um, but, you know, the more time you spend, typically the better something is. That's just a general rule in life, a little tidbit there for you. Uh, if you take your time, you tend to do better. <laughs> All right, so I've done the known oil wash off camera, and now I have the Babe Blonde back out, and I'm highlighting up. Again, this took multiple coats, so you're just going to see one very quickly, but it, it took a long time to get this yellow back up to yellow, especially after the, the known oil wash, but the end result, I think, is worth it. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't really match anything. Uh, I had also put known oil on the claws, I forgot to mention that, and now I'm putting the shining silver, just kind of the, the reflective points on there, so it gives it a little bit more definition, a little bit more depth, and uh, makes them look a little bit more deadly, because they're easily not noticed otherwise. As with all my heroes, I'm doing a void chill blue uh, trim, again I did this on both bases, and you're just kind of being careful at the step, and again it takes multiple, multiple coats, uh, typically two to three. So what I found, it depends on how much known oil wash you get on the sides there. Alright, and this is him. This is the finished miniature. Guys, I hope you liked this one. I really enjoyed this one. I love how he turned out. I'm super happy with him. He looks great on the board, and uh, it, it's kind of funny. He gets picked pretty much any time it's an option now, just because he's so cool. Uh, he's not always the best fit for the for the mission, but when it comes to you know being painted like this, it just really makes him pop out. I hope you appreciate the comic book style I did here again. I don't typically do it this extreme, but let me know in the comments below if this is something you like to really, really kind of push the boundaries um, of the contrast and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do another one. Uh, additionally, this is the last miniature that I had pre-planned. Now, also I'm going to keep painting miniatures here, but I would love in the comments below your suggestions on what I should paint next. If you would like to do uh, more uh, realistic voting on miniatures where I actually give you options and you pick which one it is uh, for future videos, head to my Patreon. There's actually a current vote there for a Limbo miniature that I'll be painting as voted on on Patreon. Additionally, you can actually win miniatures. Uh, I've actually given out three Batman miniatures that I've painted to my patrons in the past and I'll continue to do that as I get extras and stuff like that. So anyway, if you're interested in anything like that or just supporting the channel, link in the description below. Otherwise, thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it. If you want to see future ones, subscribe and ring the bell so that YouTube actually, you know, shows you the video. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.